Let's take a look at how to find um, uh, distribution and then find our midpoints and then some other items. Um, I have the numbers in A1 through um, A86, so that's important to keep in mind. Well, I need to kind of know what my minimum maximum is. So our minimum will be equals min uh, beginning parentheses A1 colon A86, and our maximum will be equals max beginning parentheses A1 colon A86. Now it goes from 60 to 100, uh, which doesn't surprise me because I did a RAND between uh, 60 and 100, so it gives me random numbers between those. Well, if I come over here to find out how spread out my data is, our range, we'll take our largest minus our smallest, like that. And that gives us um, 40. Now let's say I want eight uh, class, um, different classes. So I'm going to take this and I'll divide by 8 and then that will give me this here which is my class width. Now you really want something kind of nice here. Um, you, don't want, you don't want like 6 if you're doing it by hand. Uh, if you're using Excel it's not such a big deal but it's still easier just to have a number we can easily add over and over. Well my ending um, class will end with 100 because that's my largest number. If my class width is 5, then the next one above it will be 95, then 90, then 85, then 80, then 75, 70, um, 65, and 60. And if this one um, ends at 95, then um, this one begins at 96. This one ends at 90, this is 91, and I'm subtracting 5 over and over. Um, so this would be 86, 81, um, 76, 71, 66, um, 61, and 56. Now we're going to want Excel to build the frequency for us, the, how many are in each, each of these ranges. But what we have to do is we have to put the upper class limits which is these on the right side. These are our lower class limits here. We have to put our upper class limits in the column right next to our numbers. Now in Excel, these are called bins. So upper class limits be bins. Now it doesn't matter what order we go in. Smallest, largest, largest, smallest, it'll still work. So put 60, 65, 70, 75, uh, 80, 85, 90, 95, and 100. They, um, don't even have to be uh, evenly distributed, but okay. So now, once I got that, I'm going to choose my data tab, and I'm going to choose my data analysis, and I'm going to choose a histogram. Click OK. Now our input range I have A1 colon A86, and our bin range will have B1 colon B9. Because that's where we put our bin, bins at, our upper class limits. And then this is where our data was. If I wanted to chart, I'd choose that, but I'm not looking to chart today. So I click OK. And it gives us this. Now this is kind of hard to interpret, so let's write it down over here. We have our lower class limits and our upper class limits. So these 60, 65, actually, might as well use the power of Excel, I guess. This would be equals A2. And then I can click this and fill it down like that. I could even um, help myself on some of these. This one is one greater than um, E9. So that'd be e equals E9 plus 1. And then I can click that and I can fill it up. Unfortunately, you can't do the first one. Um, so it would just be 56. Okay. Anyway, where this one ends, this one begins. Where this one ends, this one begins. And now we want our frequency. So equals B2. And I'm just putting them over here so we have a, a separate area. So we're going to work with it. So that's all our frequencies. Now our midpoints. Your midpoints, you do equals, beginning parentheses, the current lower class limit, which is D2, plus the next one, which is D3 and then closing parentheses divided by 2. 
So you add the current lower class limit plus the next lower class limit and then divide by 2 and enter. Now this I can then fill down. Unfortunately when it gets to the last one there isn't another lower class limit so the formula doesn't work. Um, our class width was 5 so I could just type this in. This is 98.5. Now if I didn't want to hard code it, like if I wanted to dy dynamically change in the future, I could do equals G9 plus 5. So things to keep in mind. Uh, that way when these numbers still change that this would, um, well, unfortunately you can't uh, do a histogram again and dump it right into the same sheet and so forth. Okay. We got our midpoints. Well, let's take a look at some other items that you may need. Um, we got our relative frequency. And this is going to be the, the frequency plus the total. Well, if I come down here, click down here to get the total, I go to home, I click the auto sum button, and choose my check mark or enter. There's 86, which I knew, but. Now over here in relative frequency then, I'll say equals F2, divide the current frequency, and then divide it by dollar sign F, dollar sign, uh, what's that, 11. Now you have to have the dollar signs before the F and before the 11. That's so when you fill it down, it will always point to F11. Then times 100. And now I'll come up and click this cell and choose the lower right and fill down. And those will be our relative frequencies. Now our, our cumulative relative frequencies what we do is we'd add the current relative frequency plus all the ones above it. So I do equals this one's just there's just there's none above it. On this one I do H3 plus H2. Now I'm going to do this um, hard coding it so you can actually see what I'm talking about cumulative. Because some, sometimes people have troubles with that. Equals H4 plus H3 plus H2. Equals H5 plus H4 plus H3 plus H2. Now what you can do is you can do a sum. And then you can put in, um, what are we, H6 colon H2. And we'll add those together. Uh, equals sum. And it doesn't matter what order. If I did H2 colon H7, same way. Uh, sum uh, H, um, eyes are getting off. 8 through H2. And then um, sum again. H9 colon H2. So there's different ways you can do things in Excel. Or I could just do it one way. I could do H10 plus H9 plus H8 plus H7 plus H6 plus H5 plus H4 plus H3 plus H2. So your choice. That's cumulative rel relative frequency. Well, let's take a look at how to find the cumulative frequency. learned a hard way not to abbreviate that incorrectly. Okay. So now um, I'm going to add the current frequency plus all the ones above it. So this one will be F2. There is no one above it. This one will be F3 plus um, F2. Again, the current frequency plus all the ones above it. And then this one will be equals F4 plus. Now all the ones above it are actually the cell right above where I am which is J3. Um, now if you do that, then when you come down to here, all you have to do is fill down and it'll it'll do all those for you. And if I come down here, see this is saying F10 plus uh, the one above it. So it, it just keeps building. And um, I think that's uh, relative frequency, frequency, cumulative relative frequency, cumulative frequency. Okay, that's, that should be everything you need. Um, now, I like to have them right next to each other. So, you know, if I was um, going to build something based upon uh, UCL and the cumulative frequency, and this is personal preference, you know, I'd, I'd highlight this, I'd right click on it, say copy 
click over here and right click and say paste that's interesting uh, world is just paste I hate this new Excel let me try it again <laughs> okay if I click this right click on it say copy uh, right click over here actually read the, the values okay what's the saying okay values is what it shows if I made it easier to use and now I don't know how to use things okay now click these I'll right click on or select them and then choose copy I come over here right click on that and I guess I'll paste values like that well now now that I have this you know I can highlight that and I can choose my insert and choose my um, where's my uh, scatter there it is and then choose this and then I can have that kind of build up like that so But I think, and I'm not that great at Excel, I haven't taught that computer applications course for a while, but I think you can select this and um, let me hold down my control key. Let's see if this works. You may have to actually do what I said. Um, let me choose insert now, choose scatter, and that. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, you should um, select them and then paste them over here. Now, again, I'm not the greatest in Excel. Um, I know I do the statistical functions, but um, as each version of Excel comes out, I kind of lose a little bit more. Uh, but the easiest way is just paste them over here and then create your chart like that. And that should be everything I want to show you there.